What's going on everybody? It's your boy Gage and today I am excited to show off my Buster Blader deck profile. This deck is powerful, consistent, and really, really cool. Buster Blader has always been one of my favorite cards and I'm very excited to be able to show off the build that I have today. Remember, if you're a fan of this type of content, please remember to like and subscribe. It really shows your support. Uh, and without further ado, I'm just going to hop right into it. So to kick things off, we are, of course, playing two copies of the OG Buster Blader, as well as the Buster Blader Destruction Swordmaster. So Buster Blader, so cool. If you haven't checked out the lore behind Buster Blader, it really is worth your time. It's a little sad, but it's really awesome. Uh, essentially, the main purpose of the deck is to try and get into your Buster Blader fusion monster, and there is a trap card that allows you to uh, banish the materials from your graveyard to fusion summon him from the deck. Uh, so that is why uh, we are playing the OGs. Uh, you never have to really worry about drawing into the Buster Blader because the Link Monster allows you to special summon him for free from your hand. So you could either use him as an additional extender or you could just have another body on field. Uh, this is a really, really strong deck because it creates a lock with the Buster Dragon and the Fusion Buster Blader on your side of the field. You change all of your opponent's uh, monsters to Dragon types, and then they are essentially locked out of attacking and uh, activating their effects. So, yeah, this is a really cool deck, and that's why I'm playing three copies of Buster Blader. And now to go on to the Destruction Swordsman, uh, the Destruction Sword Monsters, we are playing three copies of Buster Whelp of the Destruction Swordsman, the faithful companion to Buster Blader. Such a cute card. Uh, this is the main searcher of your deck, so on normal summon, you could add a Destruction Sword card from your deck to your hand. Uh, so this is really good at allowing you to search uh, the trap card. That allows you to go into your Buster Dragon using materials from the deck. Uh, those materials then get set to the graveyard. Uh, and from there, you can use the other trap card, which banishes those materials from the grave to go into your fusion. So it's more consistent than it seems. Uh, there is a little bit of setup involved, but there is a way to get into that combo rather consistently. Uh, you, if it's in your graveyard and you control Buster Blader, you could also discard a Destruction Sword uh, card to special summon this card from uh, the grave. Uh, so that is really nice every now and again if you do need an additional extender that does come up. Uh, so yeah, Buster Whelp, it's a really good card and you should be playing three copies. We're also playing one Dragon Buster Destruction Sword, thankfully came off the ban list, and we are happy because we are able to play this in the deck natively. Uh, there is a way to be able to get him into the grave and then attach him uh, from the graveyard to your Buster Blader Fusion, so that is really powerful. Uh, for those of you that don't know, essentially when this is equipped to one of your monsters, you can lock your opponent out of their extra deck, so that is very, very powerful. Of course, we are going to play at least one copy. I've seen some builds play two, uh, but I really like this just being in the deck, uh, so I really don't want to draw into him. And then we also have the one Wizard Buster Destruction Sword. Uh, I love the theme of the Buster Whelp bringing weapons to Buster Blader, depending on what he is fighting against. Uh, and for this one, this actually allows you to lock your opponent out of their graveyard. So if you know that you're going up against uh, an archetype where the extra deck really doesn't matter as much, sometimes it's worth going into him so that you can actually lock your opponent's graveyard and act as an abyss dweller. So that is really, really good, especially if you're going up against something like Eldlich. So I love having this utility in the deck. And that's it for the Destruction Sword monsters. Now for the extenders, I am playing three copies of Jester Confit. Uh, such a, an amazing extender. I mean, you could special summon it for free. Uh, there really is no conditions behind it. Uh, and that's really good because it works well in conjunction with a spell card, Where Art Thou, uh, that we are playing. I'll explain that combo a little bit later. But just know that you really want uh, level one monsters on your side of the field to help you search for your Buster Whelp. So three Confit is really good. And two copies of Tenyi Spirit at Hara. So like I mentioned, you really want to get 
uh, monsters that can special summon themselves for free. This one does have the, the condition that you have to control no monsters. Uh, so depending on your hand, it might not uh, always work out to get him onto the field. However, it is still really, really good because it's a level one and because it's a tuner. So it can help you get into your Halki Fibrax if necessary. I am also playing two copies of Recover. Unfortunately, this one can't special summon itself from your hand for free. However, it can special summon itself from the graveyard. So it allows you to go into your Link to uh, Protector Whelp, which is really good if you need it in a pinch. All right, and that's it for the level one extenders. Now to show off another engine, I am playing a small rocket engine. Uh, just being able to end your board with a Boreload Savage Dragon is really, really good. And of course, the Quick Launch is one of the best extenders uh, in the game. So of course, playing a rocket engine, it really helps the consistency of being able to protect your board. Uh, rocket Recharger to go along with that Tracer to help you get into your Boreload Savage Dragon. And then I am playing the One Rocket Synchron. It is a level one tuner, uh, so it can help you uh, for the Where Arf Thou plays and to help you go into Alki Fibrax. And that's it for the monsters. Now for the spells, I am playing, like I mentioned, three copies of Where Art Thou. So, so good at helping you get into your Buster Whelp. Uh, essentially, if you control a level one monster, you add a level one monster from the deck to your hand. Uh, you do pay 2,000 life points, but honestly, considering the end board you are going to put your opponent, uh, you're just going to have your opponent locked out. So honestly, if you're able to get into that main combo, chances are you're winning that game. So paying 2,000 life points doesn't really matter. Uh, and you're playing a ton of level ones. So the chance that you will have one of those level ones in conjunction with Where Art Thou is incredibly high. And that's why I love playing the three copies. Really good for consistency purposes. And for consistency, I'm also playing two copies of Jack in the Hand. So this is a relatively newer card, I'd say, came out last year. Uh, essentially, you reveal three level one monsters with different names from your deck. Your opponent adds one to their hand. You add one to yours. And you shuffle the third back into the deck. So most of the time, you are going to be using this to either get into your uh, Buster Whelp or your Jester Confit. Now, your opponent can take uh, the Jester Confit because it is an additional extender for them as well. However, that lets you get into your Buster Whelp, allowing you to get into full combo. Now, they could big brain you and go and take the Buster, uh, the Protector, <laughs> excuse me, uh, to take your Buster Whelp. Uh, so that you don't have access to that full combo. However, if you already drew into it, this essentially becomes a bluff. Uh, so that is really, really good. And no matter what, that means they're giving you an extender. So I like that this uh, essentially gets you whatever you need. Uh, and unfortunately, I can't play three copies because it is a hard once per turn. Uh, if not, I'd be playing this at three copies easily. And then I am playing three copies of Quick Launch. Like I mentioned, the Rocket Engine is so good. Boreload Savage Dragon is a hell of a card. And Quick Launch helps you to get there. Uh, what's also great about Quick Launch is that if you do have Quick Launch in conjunction with Where Art Thou and you don't have any of your level one monsters, you could use the Quick Launch to go into the Rocket Synchron and there your Where Art Thou becomes live. So there are so many ways to be able to get into your uh, Buster Whelp. And uh, that's also another reason why I like playing the Quick Launch. Again, consistency is key. So we are playing two copies of Pot of Desires. We're playing three copies of pretty much any of the relevant cards that we need. So the chance of you banishing anything that you actually need is very, very slim and very worth it to be able to take advantage of essentially a free Pot of Greed. And for the last spell, one for one, we're playing a ton of level one monsters, so being able to get a free one onto your side of the field is always nice. And that's it for the spells. Now to hop into the traps. I am playing three copies of Prologue of the Destruction Swordsman. So this is the trap card that lets you get into your Buster Dragon. You could send a Destruction Sword card and a Buster Blade or monster from your deck to the graveyard to special summon a Buster Dragon from your extra deck or graveyard. Uh, so this is incredible. It helps you to get into your Buster Dragon to help you get into that lock. 
and it sends the materials that you'll need for your other uh, trap card that allows you to fusion summon into your Buster Blader. Uh, so three copies is a must. And of course, we are playing two copies of Destruction Sword Memories. So this is what allows you to, uh, you can banish this from the grave, and then you can fusion summon a Buster Blader, uh, the Buster Blader fusion monster uh, from your extra deck by banishing the materials listed on it from the graveyard. So usually you will be using this to send uh, maybe your Destruction Sword, uh, your Dragon Buster Destruction Sword and your Buster Blader to the grave. Then you can use this to banish this to banish those materials and special summon your fusion monster. So it really, really works out. Uh, I don't want to play three copies because you really want this to be in the deck. You don't really want to draw into it. Uh, and it's just such a good card. Uh, it allows you to get into your lock. And so that's why I am playing the two copies. I'm also playing two copies of Destruction Sword Flash. So honestly, these are flex spots. Uh, just win more cards, honestly, because if you control a fusion monster that lists Buster Blader, so your Buster Blader fusion, you can banish all monsters your opponent controls. It really is that simple. So, uh, honestly, if your opponent thinks that they were going to break your board, then they really got another thing coming because uh, Destruction Sword Flash, usually if you're flipping this, uh, that is GG. So two copies does not hurt to have in the deck. And then for the most insane card in this deck, two copies of Red Rain. Uh, so essentially, your end board is going to be looking like your Buster Dragon, your Fusion Monster, and maybe the Borload Savage Dragon on top of that. They're all level eight. So essentially, uh, you are going to be keeping all of your monsters they're going to be unaffected by all card effects, and then that is pretty much it. So if your opponent tries to use something like the Dark Ruler No More, you can flip Red Rain, protect all of your monsters, and therefore their Dark Ruler No More essentially fizzles. Uh, so this is really, really good to have on top of your end board, and that's why I am playing two copies. And for the last three cards I'm playing in the deck, I'm playing three copies of Trap Trick. As you can see, all of the traps in our deck are just regular, normal traps. So you could use Trap Trick to search them out. We're playing at least two copies of all of them. So no matter what, this is going to be live. So it'll help you to get into your prologue if necessary, if you weren't able to draw into it. And that's it for the main deck. So now I'm going to show off the extra deck. So the big boy himself, two copies of Buster Blader, the Dragon Destroyer Swordsman. So he is a hell of a card. Uh, once you get him onto the field, it's usually the end of the game. Uh, he can't attack directly, unfortunately. However, it gains a thousand attack and defense for each dragon monster your opponent controls or is in their graveyard. Uh, you could also change all dragon monsters your opponent controls to defense position, and also dragon type monsters in your opponent's possession cannot activate their effects. So he is really strong in conjunction with the Buster Dragon. Obviously, the Buster Dragon helps you to change your opponent's monsters into dragons so that they are affected by him. However, that one of the top decks right now is Rocket Dragon Link. So natively, you don't even need to go into the Buster Dragon for him to be a threat to that deck. So really, really strong card. And I am playing three copies of Buster Dragon. Uh, the chance of you going into all three is very slim. I just like playing. He's one of my favorite cards, and I like playing him in the deck. Uh, so this is what allows you to make all of your opponent's monsters dragons. It really is that simple. Once you get him onto the field with the fusion monster, that is how you create your lock. So three copies of Buster Dragon, realistically two should be fine enough. I am playing the one copy of Borload Savage Dragon. Like I mentioned, he is a hell of a card. Uh, so having this on top of your uh, board is going to make it that much more powerful. Uh, <laughs> Being able to have an Omni Negate at any time is really, really good, so why not play at least the one copy? 
And then for protection and OTKs, I am playing Appalosa and Boral Sword. Sometimes you have just a ton of material, so why not? If you're able to go for an OTK, uh, if you're able to use additional materials to go into an Appalosa, that is not half bad. So I do play the one copies of each. And then I am playing Saryuja. So if you do have enough materials, but you don't have your trap card in your hand, you can use your your monsters to help you go into him to try and dig deeper to get into your trap tricks, to get into your prologue. So having one copy of Saryuja is not half bad. And then, of course, for utility, I'm playing Nightmare Phoenix as well. I'm playing Halky Fibrax, not necessarily required, but it is nice because we are playing a decent amount of tuners, and he can help you to get into even more materials. I'm playing two copies of the Protector Whelp. Uh, so this is the card you're going to be going into pretty consistently. When it's Link Summoned, you can send a Destruction Sword card from your deck to the graveyard. So you may already be seeing where we're going with this. This is going to send uh, your, not the prologue, uh, but essentially your Destruction Sword memories, and that is how you are going to be able to set up your lock. Uh, of course, if you also have the Buster Blader uh, monster in your hand, you could also su special summon it to your field for free using his effect as well. So, Protector Whelp, really, really good card. And then I am playing the one copies of Link Karibo and Almirage to wrap up the deck profile. So guys, that is going to be it for the deck profile. Thank you so much for sticking around. I am not showing us... A side deck at the moment. Uh, side decks are always going to be determined by your particular locals, your metagame that you're going to be playing in. Of course, I'm going to recommend cards that are good for going second. Uh, so obviously, this deck is really, really good at being able to go first and set up those crazy locks uh, for your opponent, but it can struggle doing so uh, going second and being able to establish that lock against a board of negates. So Having some hand traps, having Dark Ruler no more, having cards that allow you to push for going second are always going to be good. So please consider those. Uh, so now it is time for the combo portion of the video. I'll show you just the basic combo so that you understand how the deck functions. All right, everyone, welcome to the combo portion of the video. I'm just going to be showing you the basic bread and butter combo that you will be going into most of the time to establish your lock against your opponent. Uh, this is going to require just one extender along with your Buster Whelp of the Destruction Swordsman. So without further ado, we'll hop right into it. You're going to go ahead and special summon that Tenyi Spirit at Hara just because it you control no monsters. And then you will normal summon your Buster Whelp. The Buster Whelp will trigger adding the Prologue of the Destruction Swordman, Swordsman from the deck to your hand. And then from here, you will Link Summon the Buster Whelp and the Ten Yi Spirit to go into your Link to Protector Whelp. From here, the Protector Whelp will trigger, which will send your Destruction Sword memories to the graveyard. And if you did have the Buster Blader in your hand, this is where you will Special Summon it for free. And that's essentially it for your turn. So you're going to go ahead and set that Prologue. And then on your opponent's turn, you'll flip the prologue, which will send the Destruction Sword card and Buster Blader from the deck to the grave. In this case, we will be sending the Dragon Buster Destruction Sword and the Buster Blader to Synchro Summon into your Buster Dragon, which I put in defense because it has 2800 defense. And from here, you will start your chain links. So you'll chain link one Buster Dragon chain link to Destruction Sword Memories from the Grave. The Memories will trigger, allowing you to banish it, a Dragon Monster, which will be the Buster Whelp we used as material earlier, and, of course, the Buster Blader, to Fusion Summon into the Dragon Buster Destruction Swordsman. From here, the Buster Dragon will resolve, attaching the Dragon Buster Destruction Sword from the Graveyard, onto your Buster Blader Fusion Monster. And guys, that's really it. All of your opponent's monsters are now Dragon-type monsters. They're switched to defense position, and they can't activate their effects, and your opponent is locked out of using their extra deck. 
So guys, that is going to be it for the video. Uh, like I mentioned, you don't always have to go for the Dragon Buster Destruction Sword. You might want to go for the Wizard Buster in the event that you do have... Uh, uh, you're going up against an opponent that has a graveyard reliant deck. Uh, if you have access to the rocket and uh, the rocket engine, you will be able to end on this board with a Boralode Savage Dragon. And if you have Red Rain, you will be able to protect yourself from cards like Dark Ruler No More. If you're a fan of this type of content, please subscribe and thank you so much for watching. Till next time, GG.